He talks about, we never had a meeting to discuss what our differences were or him wanting to be fired in Daytona Beach. Clearly the meeting took place on uh, at Daytona 1. It took place in the side ante room. There were other elected officials there and there were people from the Chamber of Commerce there. He consistently denies that that meeting occurred. That meeting occurred, sure as I'm standing here talking to you. Now either he has Alzheimer's disease or he's a pathological liar. I think those remarks that were beneath him. I just think they're, I think they're beneath him and I, and, and I would never say stuff like that about anybody. People that put their charter through, I've gotten, I've been lucky to meet some of the original uh, people that actually pushed for the charter. And it was, they thought, a more efficient, effective, more transparent, better form of government. And they've been very proud of that. And it stood the test of time since 1970. And the understanding I have from the councils that were previous before I was here and the entire time I've been here is that occasionally things happen at the state legislature that, like in this case, can... I think accidentally or inadvertently, an action in one county, because it's written wrong, could also have an effect on this county. And uh, the reason that the council, and it's really a council issue, but when you say I and the council, it's because I think all the council members believe, like I do, that when I was appointed and they were sworn in, that our fundamental job is to uphold the laws in, the, in Florida, including the law that is the basis of this charter. This charter being home rule, it's, it's really what the citizens want. The specific issue is the charter, which was put in place for all the right reasons, has now been turned into one man's document that gives him absolute unfettered, uh, or I should say unchecked uh, control over county government. And that's not what the purpose of this is. The purpose of this is democracy. And the folks that say the charter is, this charter is this sacred document, I disagree with that. I think the charter is a living, breathing document that as time rolls on, it should have the availability to be amended at the voters if they agree with that. Out there. You know, right. I challenge the county council, let's put it on the ballot and see what the voters say. And I, in my heart, I think that they may be surprised that the voters may agree. If they don't agree, then we continue on. We have to figure out a way to make this work. A print incentive day. Basically, that is... The deputies go to your house for scene of a burglary or a car break. They really take painstaking means to process the scene. If they get a fingerprint or they get a DNA that leads to a suspect where we didn't have one, we can make an arrest at that. I want to reward them with a day off. That day does not cost the county a dime. We've had that policy in hand since the first week of January. It took over two months for me to implement that. Now, I don't know if that's a show of power on his end or what that is, but that's unacceptable. Um, we had, he, he had this idea, which he only said to me in passing, which was an incentive with the with, uh, deputies where if they find a fingerprint at a site and they end up getting a, a, um, an arrest because of that, that he thought that he would like to reward that by giving that person additional time off. And I told him I thought it made a lot of sense, but you know, that, that's his job, okay? What was that? His mean? staff, his staff took the time to write that policy they then turned that over to both HR and, and, and uh, law to make sure, we have to make sure that it uh, will stand any challenge. In, in other words, it has to meet the law. The law. And also, um, in, in this case, because you're going to apply it in a union and environment, there's a requirement that you have to meet with the union and bargain that. And, and part of what I think in some cases made this string out a little bit longer is that in the actual process of us doing this, they change unions here. Well, first of all, I think as professionals, I, I personally don't have a difference. I've always gotten along. All the conversations I've ever had with the sheriff, as I call him Mike, have been pleasant. Uh, we got along. We, uh, it was only a couple of weeks ago we, we ran in the, in the half marathon as a team. Um, never had a cross word with the man, never knew there was an issue. Um, but, but even so, now that I understand that he's made some comments, um, we're required as professionals to work together.
my job is to support his effort in whatever way he needs me to within the budget and the law. But he doesn't have to ask my permission. He should go do it. And, and I want to make that clear. He has the authority. Nothing stops him. And, and, and so what we'll do is how will we go forward? I think hopefully as a team, everything around here is team, and that I try to always be professional. I'm sure it, you know, if he acts the same way, we'll get along well. There is no working with the county manager. I'm elected. He can't fire me. I am going to do everything I can to move the sheriff's office forward like I promised in my campaign. And anybody that saw me campaign knew I kept talking about open up the windows and allowing the fresh breeze of change to roll through. Well, when you've been allowed to build the fiefdom, when you've been allowed to build the kingdom, and when you're allowed to lie and misrepresent your position or tell people, oh, that conversation never happened, that tells me the kind of character that I'm dealing with. So we're going to continue to do the job that I'm elected. I think there's a lot of people in this community who realize it's time for a change and the person blocking the change is Jim Deneen and he can't be trusted.